Dr. Zelenko became a household name when he developed his world-famous Zelenko protocol. To make sure that everybody had access to his immune-boosting formula, he created Z-Stack, my family's immune-boosting supplement of choice. Along with Z-Detox, Z-Flu, and Z-Shield, Z-Stack has helped countless families stay healthy and protected. With every purchase of Dr. Zelenko's products, you also support the Zelenko Freedom Foundation in their tireless work to promote and reinstate medical freedom for all. Click the link down below, use coupon code INSPIRE to save and protect your family today. We ran a story about an influencer. Her name is Jalen Cheney. And Jalen is an obese influencer and she says, have you ever felt that it was unfair that plus size travelers are forced to pay for an extra seat or are humiliated for their size while traveling on airlines? I have, and that's why it's time to demand fair treatment for everyone regardless of their size. And so she's basically saying, you know, airlines should give as many free seats as, as obese people need to sit comfortably. A ludicrous notion, but part of the victim culture, part of the shifting responsibility culture. We live in a transfer of responsibility. That's what I call it. T-O-R, towards society, transfer, transfer of responsibility. Basically, the, the premise of that notion is I am not responsible for the consequences of my actions and society and the people around me should adjust accordingly so I can feel more positive and confident and comfortable in my skin. And uh, that goes for any notion, right? If a guy walks around dressed like a woman, you need to call him a woman. It's okay if they want to do that, but demanding it from you and otherwise them being a victim is insanity because they're saying, please ignore the facts and play along in my delusion with me. That's what this is. But it's much bigger than that. The transfer of responsibility goes to all sections of society, but mainly we are glorifying currently, and we have been for a while, we're glorifying sickness, we're glorifying fatness, we're glorifying addictions, alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever it is. We're glorifying all these things because so many people are living like that and have been living like that and you're making them glorified examples of society that's why you know that there there's nothing to do with any kind of body shaming but if you're going to present a role model to children in society where you don't take the obesest person you can find that's not a role model our leaders are oftentimes unhealthy mentally spiritually and physically and there's an insane notion that uh, we shouldn't seek for strength for health, for a natural, healthy specimen of mankind. that That's not the goal anymore. We don't show these as the role models, and that is not to shame other people. But we have to, if we want to survive as a species, we have to start going for excellence again in terms of what we hold ourselves accountable to in standards, right? And we have lost all pride in these standards about our, our spiritual, physical, and emotional health. Excellence is using what you have and showing up with that every day and improving on it and having the responsibility to seeing it through. That's excellence, right? And so, trust me, I'm no stranger to having let myself go at times and gain weight and not feeling good about it, not feeling good in my skin, not feeling healthy, not feeling at the top of my game. And why would I allow that trend to go further in my life. No, I find it, I stop it, and I reverse and I repent. Repentance means you realize the errors of your ways and you reverse those errors and you correct them moving forward. We're using so many artificial means to improve ourselves, yet we're getting continually worse. Society's health is getting worse, mental health is getting worse. We're, we're fatter, sicker, and insaner than we've ever been as a collective. So what we have been doing is not working. We need to make sure that we make the most of what we've been given, that we teach our children again to seek healthy partners. Why would you seek a sick partner, unhealthy partner that doesn't take care of themselves, that isn't important to them, and then you want to have children with that partner? What do you think is that going to bring about in the future? Sick people don't have healthy children. It's something that has now become so bad to say but these are just logical truths. And this is not about judgments, not about pointing fingers. It's about bringing common sense back to the conversation. And if we don't improve our culture on this, if we don't improve our outlook on this, if we don't heal the Watiko in our minds, this is what every clan has done. This is what every tribe has done. Their number one priority was to keep health 
and and keep the clan going in health. Procreation was the number one priority, and they used factors and took them into account when they said, okay, women, when they chose their partners, because trust me, it's always like that. Women always choose their partners. In some cultures, it happens consciously. In other cultures, it happens subconsciously, but women always choose. In all cultures, women were always by their elders. They were taught, they chose their partners whom they will create new life with. They chose them by taking whatever qualities they wanted to see in their children. You know, if they wanted to see a more artistic, a more philosophical, those kind of traits, then they chose their partner accordingly. If they wanted more traits like strength and bravery and physical strength or tall or whatever they wanted, then they chose their partner that way. But one thing was always a prerogative and that was health. Their partner needed to be healthy because what was going to happen if, if they're not healthy, that was going to be passed on to the next generation. Now there's no such thing as that common sense anymore. And, and people are not looking at that anymore. And that's one of the reasons why we have a sick society and it's becoming sicker and sicker and sicker. Because people are not first healing themselves spiritually, physically, and mentally, which after multi-generational trauma that we've all seen in society should be the first task. Before people procreate and have children, they need to go on a healing journey. They also need to go on a self-discovery journey, on a walkabout. Because the whole problem is that sick children are raising sick children. That's really what it, what it is now. Another factor to this that isn't entirely connected to this topic is that it does really require a village to raise a child. It requires a tribe. It requires elders. Young parents weren't meant to do this on their own. That was not how it was set up in the beginning. But you had wise grandparents and others that were not blood related, but still relatives that would together because they shared a culture, they shared wisdom, they would raise those children. But today we're saying, no, it's all OK. Everything's OK. Every delusion is OK. Children, 13, 14 year old children are dressing up as cats and meowing around the place and, and pretending to be cats. And parents are, oh, it's just a phase. No, no, you know, this is going so much beyond a phase. This is not emulating or learning contact with animals. It's becoming insane. And by us constantly saying it's OK, every expression is OK. Everything is OK. Anything goes. We just show how far our minds have been perverted because we allow this to happen. And mainly we allow it where we have influence in our families and children. The smartest thing a family can do today is basically remove their children from the influence of society right now. That's the smartest thing you can do. You don't want them to get accustomed to this world. You don't want them to get accustomed to the current streams of insanity. So there's a lot of things that we need to radically change right now because this generation that is coming up right now is being taught that anything goes anything goes and that's why they are so unhinged not all of them by any means but the, the mainstream is so unhinged because of it and the same goes for physical you know illness especially by lifestyle choice and, and excuse me for the most part obesity is for the most part a lifestyle choice it's a choice people overeat by choice no one is forcing food down their mouths i'm not arguing that there aren't underlying factors. I'm not arguing that there isn't trauma. I'm not arguing these things, but that goes for, for most problems that people have. But healing is a choice. Having willpower and discipline is a choice. Making better choices, all of these things are choices and we need to treat them as that again. Otherwise we're perpetuating a victim society that serves no one, especially in a time where we need to be at our strongest because the assault on humanity is at its strongest. And this is the truth that no one wants to talk about. And I'll say one more thing. I hear this over and over again. It's okay for men to show weakness. I don't understand that statement on any level. Why would weakness ever be something you would want to cherish anyone, a man or a woman? What in the word weakness is positive? I'm not saying that you can't be sensitive. I'm not saying compassionate. I'm not saying intuitive. All these things are great. But what is great about weakness? What exactly attracts anyone to weakness? Weakness is negative in all of its forms. It has nothing positive to it. So why would we say it's good for men do, to show their weakness? No, it's, it's not good. It's not good for men to strive to be weak. Be intuitive, be compassionate, be sensitive, be all those things. But weakness, no. Nobody, nobody needs weakness in their life. It has no positive influence on your life so not all of these things are good not all feel-good psychology is good it's bullshit to take 
the beautiful traits, capabilities, and strengths from society. This is what our food does, this is what the entertainment does, and this is especially what the brainwashing right now does. It doesn't inspire anyone to become the best possible version of themselves again. It doesn't inspire anyone to strive for excellence because it's not required. Nobody needs to be excellent at anything anymore. Humans are becoming so mediocre at, at everything. A lot of people have no pride in the work that they do anymore. They don't take any pride in their craft. They don't take any pride in excellence anymore. You know, it's okay. That's basically the, the standard. And that's why we see what we see. Excellence must be the standard. We must strive for that. If you find yourself today in your life unhealthy and out of shape, well, why don't you make a choice today? Today is the day it starts changing. You start changing. What could possibly keep you from that? What could keep any of us from that? Comfort, yes. Habits, yes. Programming, yes. But we know this now. We have the tools and we can make different choices. So no, it's not okay. Once again, on all levels, we need to freaking take back responsibility and finally become self-determining and self-actualized beings again. And realize that if there's something wrong in our lives, if there's something bad in our lives, if there's something unhealthy in our lives, that we are the ones who can change it. And yes, by default, we strive to change the conditions and make it better for those to come and for those around us. That's a natural consequence of this. But don't be fooled by the narrative that it's okay. It's okay to be unhealthy. It's okay to be obese. It's okay to be without a drive for excellence. It's okay to be mediocre. No, it doesn't help anyone. It doesn't move anyone forward. It doesn't change anything in anyone's life. That's the truth that I have lived and that I know to be true. However, on the flip side of this is when you do make the choice, as always, there is a wonderful opening in your life and there's wonderful expansion. Because when you work through it, when you heal all those layers, you arrive at who you were meant to be anyways. And that is really excellent because God doesn't make mistakes. God created us in origin perfectly, no mistakes. Everything that came afterwards was our free will. So we need to use that same free will to reverse all the negative actions and consequences and move forward in a better way. And this is something people don't like to hear because it means discipline, it means work, it means showing up, it means repentance, it means unprogramming, reprogramming. It is work. There's no doubt about it. And there's no way around it either. No. We are the ones who are responsible for that. Uh, sending much love to you all. I wanted to put this out there. I know it's provocative. I know it's triggering. It was intended to be. Would you like to get access to exclusive content as well as being part of a community of like-minded people posting, sharing, and connecting on a deeper level? Come join the inspired community on Locals where we share more intimately and privately and do our coffee and truth live streams as well as our Honey Talks show, the only inspired show with Christine Nolan. The inspired community is absolutely uncensored and unfiltered, a place for truth, authenticity, and freedom. Join us now at inspired.locals.com or click on a link in the video description.